Okay, this is another portion right here. Let's run it. This is part one of Pyramid Code. The Great Pyramid stands exactly at the center of the largest land mass on the planet. Yet, we had no idea of the position of continents until 600 years ago. Now, when she says we, you have to recognize that she's speaking from a Eurocentric perspective. That is the professor, um, I think, Carmen Volta, if I'm correct, in this program, um, documentary five-part series called Pyramid Cope. Now, the reason why we're going here, now get your Bibles for a moment. And those who don't have a Bible right now handy, write this down and, and look it up for yourself. It's very important in I and I studies to understand this. Isaiah or Isaiah, Isaias or in the Hebrew Yeshayahu, Yeshayahu or Yeshayahu, um, uh, chapter 19, 1919. So I think you could probably could remember that, but if you have pen and paper, take that down. 1919. 1919. Now, what does it say here in Isaiah chapter 19, verse 19? It says, In that day shall there be an altar, an altar, A-L-T-A-R, an altar to the Lord, to yod Hey wow Hey, to Yahweh, the triune God in the midst of the land of Egypt, in the midst of the land of the Gubbet, the Gubbet, or the Keb, the Keb, uh, the, the, the Kebland, the, the Gubbet, the Gebland, or the Gubland, right? And a pillar, a pillar, right? Like a howlet, or one could say an obelisk. In the same um, documentary, they show that uh, there's a certain spot where, you know, they always say the Egyptians didn't have the wheel and all that. It's a lie, because this documentary and others basically show that there's a lot of our ancestral antiquities. Remember, Egypt is one of our Afro-Shemitic, Ethiopian heritage sites, which have been stolen from us by squatters and other invaders and pseudo-conquerors so forth and so on. You know, they're trying to enjoy their Arab Spring, but actually they're trampling on the, the, the tomb robbing and trampling on the landmarks. You know, our proverbs say that thou should not remove the ancient landmarks, because when you do that, what happens? You get lost. You don't have the landmarks. So they're removing the ancient landmarks, they're destroying ancient art and facts, and presenting a counterfeit um, Egypt and Egyptology to themselves and to the world. However, there are a few among those uh, Gentile, European, and, and white scholars out there who recognize something has gone wrong, and more and more they're beginning to speak out. So we give thanks and praise for the truth that they're sharing with us in documentaries such as this and the evidence that they give us. All right, so it says that there'll be a, in that day, so there'll be a certain day. And the whole chapter needs to be overstood in its, in its um, historical, quote, unquote, context. It's speaking about the burden of Egypt. Uh, this, is, this is the Schofield Study Bible subscription here on chapter 19 at the head of the chapter. It says, um, the burden of Egypt, of good, of good uh, looks forward through desolations to kingdom the Mengish or the the Malkut blessing the Barakat with Israel. Isn't this interesting right here? They, in parentheses, see kingdom Old Testament Zechariah. And I and I sister wife said something and yeah, I, I gotta give you the credit for this because you have said we were listening and watching and they mentioned about Sakara. And she said to me, Zachariah, remember that? He said, Zachariah, you know, Zachariah, Zakara, Zakara, Zakara. And they say, no, Zakara, Zakara. No, Zachariah. You mean Zachariah. You, you mean Sakara? No, you mean Zachariah. 
You know, so it's in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 8, there's a note there. And because this is a, this is an overflow, this is part of the overflow of Levitical Padisha for this 39th, R.S. As, uh, 39, so this kind of goes with that, but can also be connected with other portions of our studies, because we have to be able to see it in its proper context and not through its uh, whitewash or so-called protestantism or some of the European mix-ups that's going on, you know, in Christianity. They, they have their own issues. You know, a lot of the European Christians, they've had their own issues for the past 400 years, and um, we've been at the bottom of their own issues, but it's time that we tell Masa, bottom rail on top, bottom rail up on top now. Zechariah 12 and 8. So Zechariah 12 and 8, we go to Zechariah 12 and 8, and what do we find right here? In 12 and 8, Sakara 12 and 8. The verse says, in that day, another in that day, in that day, not now, not when it was first um, spoken on or revealed, but at some time, in the what is he, the what is he, in the future, in the forward, sometime in the forward, in the what is he. It says right here, in that day shall the Lord, the Abiher, Lotusapat, shall the sustainer to him be the praise, defend, defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem or Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I Jerusalem. Interesting the name when we get into that as well. Um, and he that is feeble, he that is feeble, he, he was weak, he who don't have much strength among them at that day shall be as David, shall be as Tahuti, shall be as Davuti, shall be as DVD, Dawit. And the house of DVD, the house of Dawit, the house of Tehuti, right, shall be as God. Are, are you taking that down, Z Zakara, Zachariah, Zacharias, chapter 12, verse 8, in that day shall yod hey wow hey Yahweh, because Yahweh had his primordial name before the world was established, shall he defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is evil among them, at that day, that day shall be as David, shall be as great King David, and the house of David shall be as God, and the house of David shall be as who? So when we're speaking about Edomawi, Haila Shalase, Haila Shalase, the verse. You know, folks ask us, they say, oh, what do you think, Shalase? You think Shalase as God? You know, what well, the word is telling us, you know, what is true. Yeah, and you got to meditate, you know, every man got to decide his own destiny. So you got to weigh it, you got to look, you got to study, you got to seek it, you got to find the truth for yourself. You can't go around make-believe or making somebody believe or, you know, having somebody make you believe. You know, like we say, if you take what we say, you know, without studying for yourself, we call you fool. You should go and study this for yourself, especially now in a day and a time like this where we have the so-called internet and, and, and all this kind of information, super highway, so forth and so on. This is a precious time. And not just, you know, go on the internet, but also preserve it, you know, because this age is a short age. We're in a short age period. This age is going to be cut short. How do we know? Because Jah has told us that. And because by studying it, we see the positive affirmation of the signs. We recognize, right, we recognize what the true signs of the times are. So it's saying to us, right, it's saying to us, uh, light, right, it's saying to us that the what, that the house of David, let's read over this again, in that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. All right, now in Revelation, right, Jerusalem is Addis Ababa, the new Jerusalem, the African Zion. So he shall defend Jerusalem, the city of peace, the city of his peace, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, shall be as great King David, right? And the house, and we're speaking about the monarchy, 
the Imperial Monarchy of Ketamari Hala Selassie. Now you begin to understand why they have fought so hard against this righteous man, this just man, this holy man, I and I, God, Father, and King of Kings. It says, in the house of David shall be as God. You know, a lot of folks don't understand, well, why are you saying, okay, even if he is, why are you saying that he's, what, what does the Bible say? What does the scripture say? What does the prophet say? And it says, it shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord, as the angel of the Lord, the Eliodi, as the Ebo say, the Eliodi, right, the angel of Yahweh before them. All right, so just recognize before we put this this forward here so you can recognize. So this connection now, you understand? In Egypt right here with these pyramids, right? right. Now notice what it, it said. Let's, let's, let's return to, um, let's return for a moment. Put a mark in this part right here because this verse, Zechariah 12 and 8, is significant. Now many of us in the so-called uh, Italian or fascist invasion of Ethiopia circa 36 to uh, uh, 41, we see a manifestation of the Lord, of He who is, who He is, Yahweh, yod He wah He, defending the inhabitants of His Jerusalem, of the New Jerusalem, of the African Zion, of that city, of Addis Ababa, and He that is what feeble among them at that day shall be as David and the house of David shall be as God as Elohim as Ha Elohim as the angel the Melach the Melach as Dr. Malako Emmanuel Bay the Melach of the Lord of he who is who he is Yod Hey Wow Hey before them now the footnote down here is very, very interesting. The footnote that we have down here, because they, they go see the footnote, and the footnote is concerning the kingdom, the Mengish, in the Old Testament summary. Now recall and put this note down for yourselves. Um, the note is Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, right? Chapter 13. Now, that is the number of God, right? It's the number of God knowledge, the right knowledge of the King of Kings and his Christ. Chapter 13 in the book of Matthew, what does it say? It says that the soul goes forth to sow, right? The soul goes forth to sow. And when Christ now explained that parabolic logic, that verbal hieroglyph, he said that uh, the explanation of the first part was that when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, what happens to that one? It says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. Remember, this is all talking about the kingdom. The house of David. See, my David, the root and the offspring of David, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Moab, and Bethlehem, them and the of Yehuda. The house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. Now, the footnote here in uh, Zechariah or Sakara, if you please, Zechariah, the footnote, basically speaking on the kingdom in the Old Testament summary. And, and, and this is a full teaching here, but it gives a breakdown of, of the dominion over the earth before the call of Abraham. What is it? The dominion over the earth before, that pre-dynastic, before the call of Abraham, right? Then the second part talks about the theocracy, the theocracy, we're not talking about democracy or our spring. We're talking about the theocracy in Israel, in the true Israel, among the Beta Israel, the once lost but now found Beta Israel, I and I, Ethiopian Hebrews, and elect Ras Tefari. All right? And then the third matter under the kingdom in the Old Testament, the Belui Kidan, the summary, the, is. The Davidic kingdom is the Davidic kingdom. Speaking of the Davidic kingdom. Alright, now speaking of the Davidic kingdom or the kingdom of David. Now why is this important? Well, this is getting to the very root of Rastafari and the very root of Rastafari revelation in the scripture. 
studying chapter by chapter and verse by verse and going to the pure language and I royal them hard to uncover and reveal the half of the story that has not been told until now. So we have the Davidic kingdom is the third part. Interesting that when we look under the kingdom summary, there's a three part, a trinity to it. There's a dominion over the earth before the call of Abraham, there's theocracy in Israel, and there is the what? There is the Davidic kingdom. Now, the Davidic kingdom is based on one, the divine choice of David. So, it, who, cho who chose David? The people, evidently, if you study the scripture, they didn't choose David. I mean, the Judahites did, the faithful did. You know what I'm saying? They chose David. But the other ten tribes, the Israel, you know what I'm saying, or the, the Asar El, you know what I'm saying, the Asar El, you know, uh, Asra'an, Asra'hule, you know, but the, 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 the ten of El, the ten tribes, did not, but the two did, the, the two witnesses did choose David in the sense. But who chose David before they chose? It was Yahweh. Yahweh chose David. And that's based on the theocracy there. So it's not about democracy, you know, and this is what's confusing a lot of ones in the Ethiopian world generation, too. We are forgetting that, yes, there is a so-called people choose, because people have to choose Jah. You know what I'm saying? The people of Jah must choose Jah. And when the people of Jah choose Jah, then having an election, say, well, which of our nine brethren or sister is going to represent us? It's no problem. We don't have a whole bunch of people there with their selfish aims and objectives, you know what I'm saying? Making confusion and making madness. You know what I'm saying? So it's very clear when we're speaking now, when we're speaking of this um, Davidic kingdom, the kingdom of David, you know what I'm saying? And of Pilate Selassie the first, the revelation of his imperial majesty in and through Christ. Now, what's interesting right there is that there's a three part here to the kingdom. There's a whole kingdom summary right here. There's a three part here. And the third part is the Davidic kingdom, the divine call of David, 1 Samuel's XVI, or 16, 1 to 13. The second part is the giving of the Davidic covenant, the giving of the Davidic al-Kidan. And this is one of the reasons why the Queen of Sheba and our only son, Minyalik, or the Kibra Nagas, is very, very important to us. Some would try to um, downgrade it. You understand? They try to downgrade it. You know, or it's just a story or whatever like that because it's not theirs. And if they were to accept it in spirit and in truth, that means they would have to stop doing what they are doing or admit open rebellion to God in Christ. See, so it's a secret, it's a creeping coup, as it was a creeping coup. You know what I'm saying? So it's a creeping coup. So they're not admitting that. And this is one of the reasons why they don't admit the reality of the Kibra Nagas and the reality of the kingdom of David being renewed in the highlands of Ethiopia, which fulfills that psalm and that word of Jah, you understand? And also fulfills the intention of Jah, too, if you recall, with the tribes of Israel and the people where Jah was going to destroy them. And he said, I'll make a great people out of you, Moses. And Moses is a Hebrew, and his wife is an Ethiopian. So we once again got that Ethiopian-Hebrew kind of connection all through the Bible. You understand? All through the Bible. Now, the giving of that Davidic covenant is fulfilled in the events that are enumerated in the Kibra Negev. Now, Second Samuel, VII, or which is seven, which is uh, seven. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 8 to 16. Then we have Psalm LXXXIX, which is, um, what is that, 50, 60, 70, 80, you understand, uh, what is it, 89, Psalm 89 verses 3 and 4. Then it has 20, 21, 28 to 37 as well, which is key and very significant. Um, for I and I, and let me just look for it. What's that? Psalm 80, 89. Let's just take check out Psalm 89 for for a 
for a moment. Mm. Oh, Psalm 89. Psalm 89. So put that Psalm there as well. But then we can also, you understand, um, connect Psalm 87 as well. And of Zion it shall be said, this and that man was born in her, and the highest himself shall establish her. Right? I mean, which is following the verse that says, I will make mention of Rahab, which is the metaphorical name for Egypt. It is what you could call the bad name for Egypt on a certain level. Not, not the other Rahab, but we're speaking of this Rahab. Rahab and Babylon, we're speaking of kingdoms and nations to them that know me, to those that have the gnosis of the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he makes mention of this, and they understand. So when we say Babylon, when we say Rahab, behold, Philistia, Palestine, and Tyre. Some say Tyre might be Spain, and therefore connection with the Moors. Others say Tyre might be a more distant connection with Asia or Japan, but we think it's more with the Mediterranean and the Moors in this, in this context. But we'll get into that in some detail. It says, with Ethiopia. With Ethiopia, along with Ethiopia, and here's the clarity right here. It says, this man was born there. This man was born there. Born where? Born in Ethiopia. And the beginning of the psalm says his foundation is in the holy mountains. You know his foundation is in the holy mountains. And we have those mountains that ancient Egypt, the pyramids, are like many mountains which remind them of the ancestral homeland. So we begin to see this wraparound connection right here with all of the elements. So it's not just one verse, it's not just because Ethiopia is mentioned here or there, but it's now studying it and finding the inner connection and then bringing the evidence that's laying in plain sight. So we're gonna get into that a little bit more, but let's, let's move forward and just get to where we were in the beginning, 1919, Isaiah 1919. In that day, in that day shall there be an altar, an altar. What was the purpose of the pyramids? This is what people are um, disputing about. Some say it was burial sites for the, for the, um, for the pharaohs and the rulers. Well, the egotistical Europeans would probably think that because that's what they would do. And that's why they have, you know, interpreted that way. But it says it's an altar. To who? They'll say, well, it's to the Egyptian gods and to their gods. Well, here it says, in that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. Now, this is why we, um, you know, wanted to actually utilize this video right here. Because as you look at this particular video right here, you can see how this is in the midst of the land. Not just the land of Egypt, but the land, the earth. That can be interpreted not just as in the midst of the land of Egypt, but it, remember that is also the center of the earth. You know, in the, and a pillar at the border thereof. Notice this, how that's the border thereof. Now, now, now see this right here. We want to back this up where it showed it from a global perspective. And it's interesting because uh, the narrator... Um, she basically said, well, how would they know these things since we only found out about it, which is a clear distinction. They're trying to make humanity found out, that, like, that's why they tried to make it like the Egyptians wasn't human beings. You understand? On a certain level compared to where we have fallen, because we're living in the image of the beast. This is why they disconnected and disassociated and said, no, that was in your ancestors. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all don't know this, and many of y'all are not interested in this so forth. So you're preaching in the past without connecting, on teaching you what the true word of God is. That's why y'all are so shocked at what is happening in this time. All your illusions and delusions are being crashed and dashed asunder. Now notice, notice this right here. We, we're drawing out, we're drawing out. Let's see if we can get it at a good particular point so you can see the whole picture, so you can see the full picture right here. Okay, that's, that's, that's a good point right there. Now notice how this is in the midst. This is in the midst. You know, and, and what's so interesting is that the Europeans have only gotten to that basic um, third, maybe grade level or so, 
where they can basically understand that, wow, this is really in the midst of the earth. You know, for all that satellites and technology, how would they do this, you know, since we just had satellites just now? You know, we're just up in space, or so the lower layers of space, they're not really in real space. They're in, they're, they're in the lower space and everything. They can't really go out. It's too hot out there in real space, too many waves out there, solar magnetic waves out there, you know, out in real space. They don't know how to ride the waves. You know what I'm saying? But it's interesting right here when we look at this and we look at Isaiah, which is in Isaiah 19, 19, right? Verse 20. It says, and it shall be, this shall be, these pyramids, no, these, these three pyramids right here. There's these uh, trinity of pyramids. And what does the word say? What does Tinnabite Science, the prophet Isaiah say in chapter 19 at verse 20 now? And it shall be this, this particular altar to the Lord right in the midst of the land of Egypt and the pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. It shall be for a sign and for a witness. For a sign and for a witness. It will be for a sign and a witness. So folks say, well, why are you studying ancient Egypt and so forth and so on? Because John says, look there and, 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 and recognize, recognize my sign and recognize my witness and understand. You know what I'm saying? the half of the story that, that the Gentiles are not telling you and are hiding from themselves. But some of the more righteous and truthful Gentiles, even themselves, are beginning to push back against this and question it. You know, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness to the Lord. Not a sign and a witness to any so-called false gods. You know what I'm saying? But this is a sign and a witness to yod Hey wow Hey. This is a sign and a witness to the first power of the Trinity. Where? Where? It says right here, in the land, the Lord of hosts, which is even more clear, Yahweh Tzabaot. When we say Yahweh Tzabaot, it is likened in the Ethiopic sense of saying, Chayla Shlase. You know what I'm saying? Kedamawi Chayla Shlase, or the power of the Trinity, or the first power of the Trinity is Abba, is the Father, is Kedus Abba Tachin. So it says right here, in the midst of the land of Egypt, in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry to yod hey wow hey to he who is who he is because of the oppressors, because of the downpressors. So we are to cry to Yahweh because of the downpressors. And he shall send them what? A savior. Yeshua was sent to do what? To save his people. Right? His people. Israel. From their, what? From their sin. He was not sent but to the lost sheep of the what? Beta Israel. The house of Israel. And what do the Falashas call themselves? Beta. Isra, or really Beta. Israel. The house of Israel. And a great one. So they will send a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. Verse 21, and Yahweh shall be known to the Egyptians. So when we speak about the fact that Yahweh, you understand, is not like a newly God sprung up, like some will tell you, oh, Moses got monotheism from Egypt, so forth and so on. It was already there. The Egyptians got it from who? They got it from ancient Tobia ancient Ethiopia. And if you look right here carefully, you'll see. If you look right there, we wanted to actually find this right here, this particular book. We mentioned it before, right? Yeah. We mentioned this particular book right here. The um the roots of Rastafari, right? The roots of Rastafari by Virginia Lee Jacobs. A very very important book. It's a small book. You understand? It's a small book, but it's a very very um important book on the roots of Rastafari, right? And in this book, if you if you check it out for yourself, in this book it's very interesting because it's talking about um right here in a section called Nubia, the land of gold. Now, we don't have the option to go through the whole thing right here, but in Nubia, the land of gold, it's at this 
um, second paragraph where you see right here we're speaking about um, as the descendants of Noch, and that name etymologically relates to the Ankh, right? The descendants of Noch, they migrated down the Nile Valley. With them went the vanishing knowledge of what? The vanishing knowledge of Yahweh. The vanishing knowledge of Jahweh. Of Jahweh. Yahweh. The one true God. Yahweh or Jehovah the God of the ancient Israelites, or more correctly, the God of the Hebrews, is probably, she says, Virginia Lee Jacobs here, where the modern reference to Jah finds its origin. This is a very key bit of information. It says, before long, worship of Noah's one true God was limited to a very few elite families, or Israelite families, but through Aksumawi, Aksumawi, the great, great grandson of Noah, worship of Yahweh or Jahweh survived in relative isolation, immune to numerous other cults or the other cultures that were still worshiping nature spirits. You understand? Know still worshiping nature spirits. Instead of being to look up, they started to look down, and supernatural forces promoted by the surrounding native tribes, right? And then last uh, line it says, it was no small accomplishment that Aksumawi established a monotheistic um, culture, or really a Tawahido culture, in the ancient city that we know as Aksum. And then it goes further to even explain the Amen, the connection of the Egyptian Amen as well. You, and, and, and how it all started to come down the Nile River Valley to that first colony of ancient Ethiopia or Tobia. So this chapter right here, Nubia, the land of gold, which also connects what we have in the Bible and how Ethiopia is mentioned there, is very, very, this is a very significant chapter right here, which is under the, uh, the it's named the Discovering Jah. Discovering John, and this is from the roots of Rastafari. This is why we highly, highly advise you know saying? I highly, highly advise this particular document right here, Discovering John. All right, so let's let's continue with this, right? Let's just continue with this right here. So, as we were in verse uh, 21, and Yahweh, Yod Hey Wah Hey, He is who He is, shall be known to Egypt. He shall be known to Egypt. Could say he shall be known again because in ancient times he was known. And the Egyptians shall know Yahweh in that day. They shall recognize this. And shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow. Notice vow a vow. This is the whole, the Netzer, the Nazar. You know, the Nazarite. See that connection right there? The locks, the hair. And then later on in Egypt, they say they wore these wigs because the gods wore the wigs. In other words, the sons of God, the holy ones, the Kedusan from the older ancestral generation. They shall vow a vow to Yahweh and perform it. And they shall perform it. Verse 22, and Yahweh shall smite Egypt, for Egypt shall be smitten. So now notice, when we study this and then look at the history that we already know has preceded us. The connection now. Yahweh shall do, do what? Smite Egypt, and he shall smite and heal it. He shall smite it and heal it. So we see Egypt, in a sense, being smitten. You understand? We see Egypt being smitten. We see these conquerors and invaders coming in and destroying, even to this day, destroying Ainai art and facts and tomb robbing and, and removing the, the landmarks. You know what I'm saying? Of our ancestors in this Ethiopic ancestral heritage site that we call Egypt today. But he said he shall smite Egypt. He shall smite and heal. And they shall return, return, this return, this aliyah, this teshuva, this, this return, right? This mameles. They shall return where? To Yahweh, to Yod Hey Wah, to Egeziyavi Harlotu Sephat, and he shall be entreated. He shall be entreated of them, and shall heal them. So 
it's showing the process for that healing. You understand that healing, and now those Afro um, the centrists and the Egyptologists, they really need to get this in that proper context. They need to go to the root. You understand? They need to go to the truth. Need to get to the root. Verse 23. In that day, another in that day, in that day, can you say in that day, you understand, which is this new day, in that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria. So it's interesting how Egypt and Assyria is cryptically in the news today. What's the meaning? What's really behind all of that? And the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. Is there a bigger picture that's really going on in this Arab Spring that even the so-called Arabs don't really even recognize? You understand right now just yet, but they will know Yahweh, they will know Jah. Rastafari. Verse 24 says, In that day, in which day, in that day, shall Israel, the true and faithful Israel, be the third. Notice what it says, Shall Israel be the third? The third. Remember the, this Trinitarian, this Selassian, Selassawian, overstanding. Shall be the third with Egypt and with Assyria. Even a blessing, a barakat, a barake in the midst of the land. So what will be a blessing in the midst of the land? The true and the faithful Israel. This also proves who are the true Israel. The true beta Israel. Yosen is I and I. It's the once lost but now found beta Israel. I and I, Ethiopian Hebrews. At home and abroad. So will be a blessing. This is the key. So do we see blessing over there today? What sort of situation do we see over there? Notice how this forms a cross. Notice how this forms a cross, the Mescal, at the very one and the same time. Verse 25, to complete this chapter right here, says, Whom the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Tabaoth, Adonai Tabaoth of the hosts, shall bless. Whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people. Wow. Can you say wow right here in Isaiah chapter 19, verse 25? Now, with all that we hear about Egypt and, and Egypt this and Egypt that, you know, from, from the Gentile um, whitewashed misunderstanding of of, of ancient history, because they're always updated, and they always say, oh, we just learned this, we learned that, so on and so on, and we can see how much they've changed in just 200 years of so-called Egyptology, but still are resisting, you understand, they're resisting that Yeshua HaMoshiach has come in the flesh, they're resisting the woolly hair, the Ethiopian complexion Moshiach, they're resisting the black Christ, the black Messiah. They're resisting the king of kings and his Christ. That's why there's no blessing. And that's why everywhere there's war. But here it says, whom the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Tabaoth, or as they say today, Adonai Tabaoth, shall bless, saying, blessed be Egypt my people. So Yahweh is saying that Egypt is his people. I understand, I mean, the true Egyptians, the native Egyptians. The Afro Shemitic Egyptian, the original, the ancestral people, and Assyria. Look at Assyria. Assyria also was black. Not like you see it today. You have to know history, their story, our story. And Assyria shall be what? The work of my hand. So Assyria, Yahweh is saying, is the work of his hand. And Israel, get this, my inheritance. My inheritance. So when we speak about our divine heritage, Ethiopia, our divine heritage. Recognize that connective link that we read about in Saqqara or we read about in Zechariah. You understand? In Zechariah, Zechariah chapter, chapter 12, verse 8, there's that connection that is made right there because this chapter, once again, just to remind you, chapter 19 of Isaiah, it speaks about the burden, the burden of Egypt. They don't recognize the burden that's on them. 
for squatting and invading in that land. There's a burden on them. You understand? They don't recognize where the time. They think they want to, they're going to do their will, but your will will be done. And he says it looks forward. We have to look forward. You understand? Know forward. We don't sorrow. It says sorrow not. You understand? Know sorrow not like those that have no hope. You know, that are hopeless. But so we have to look forward through desolations. We have to look past all of this destruction that's going on. Look forward through these desolations to the kingdom blessing, to the mengisht barakat or the mengisht borake. You know, then to the blessing of the Malkut with Israel, with Israel. And as we already pointed to, there's a, there's a kingdom note, the Mengish note from the Bilui Kidan, the Old Covenant, in Zechariah or Saqqara 12 and 8 in the Schofield Reference Bible. And we briefly went over that note and we already saw that fingerprint of the true God of Ahadu Amlat, the, 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 the triune God, you always saw his fingerprint on that by that breakdown that we found within uh, Zechariah uh, chapter 12, verse 8, under the theocracy. You understand? Prior to Abraham in pre dynastic times, the theocracy in Israel in the Mosaic times and then the Davidic kingdom and the renewal of the kingdom, you understand, the renewal of the kingdom of David in Ethiopia as the Kibra Nagesh or the Queen of Sheba and the only son Minyalik is a true testimony to it. But in Matthew chapter 13, the Sola, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven are disclosed to us. And remember, this is not given to everyone, so a lot of folks who are not born again, you know, they're not born again, they have not repented. They have not made their wills obedient to good influence. They're going out there making all sorts of crazy interpretations about the Bible, confusing people, making people turn away from John's word because they're not even authorized. Like the Psalm 51, I think it is, or 50, it says, what right do they have to take John's word in their mouth, seeing that they hate instruction? You know, so when we're trying to show them that this is afro shemitic this is black, this is African, they hate that. Ones like Hawass and these other so-called pale red Arabs who have invaded our ancestral homeland and destroyed our art and facts and pimped it out and made a merchandise of it, they hate it. So their interpretations cannot be relied on to be right and exact. But here Yeshua is speaking about the parable of the sower. And, you know, we went over this before, but it's important to, you know, to, um, like the clean animals, to regurgitate the cut. You know, and to chew, you know, to chew, you know, to machinate the cut, to chew on this, to meditate on this. Behold, a soul went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. We we'll start focus on that part right there, verse 11. And he answered and said to them, Yeshua, HaMoshia, Jesus Christos, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says, because it is given to you, and he's speaking to the dead come as a more you know what I'm saying? The more rich. He's speaking to the Talmudim, to the disciples. He says, because it's given to you, you know what I'm saying? To you, you know what I'm saying? Who have followed Christ, to you who have denied yourself, to you who have taken that course and learned of the Son of God, the Bain Ha Elohim, to know, to have gnosis. Gnosis. That's why they hate on gnosis so much. They hate knowledge. They want to keep you in ignosis. Ignorance. But it's given to us by Yeshua and by his father, our father, Abba Kedus, to know the mysteries, the mishkir, the mysteries, which if you look up the word mysteries, it's mythologies. Go look it up for yourself. You understand? Of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of the Samayat. So there's a heavenly connection. Why were the ancients so focused on the heavens? You know what I'm saying? Even we as Hebrews know that we have to know when the new moon comes in, the new month. It ought to be in alignment, you know what I'm saying, with our Heavenly Father. You know what I'm saying? But to them, it is not given. To them, it's not given. They live by Gentile time. They live by Roman time. You know what I'm saying? They live out of time, in a short time. 12, verse 12, for whosoever hath, to him shall be given. So to whoever has the truth, even a little bit of truth, more truth can be given. 
because that truth that they have and hold to and value as truth, you understand it magnetizes more truth. Like attract like is the spiritual law. But whosoever has not, whosoever doesn't have, that means rejects the truth, from him shall be taken away even that he has, even what he thinks he knows. He's going to lose. Therefore speak I, Yeshua says, to them in parables. So some are spoken to in mythology. They get caught up in the mythology. They can't understand the mythology. And because they see they're ignorant, they try to say, oh, these people didn't know what they were doing. You know what I'm saying? Because they seeing, see not, and hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. Neither do they overstand. Verse 14. And in them is fulfilled the prophet Isaiah. Once again, Isaiah, Yeshiyahu, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear. So they hear, you know, they listen, they hear, and shall not understand. But I don't know what he's talking about. Why he's talking about that? And seeing, you know, they see it, they see all the evidence, you know, ye shall see and not perceive. They can't perceive, they can't penetrate it. You know what I'm saying? They can't penetrate it. Verse 15, for this people's heart, the heart is their consciousness, is wax gross. It's wax gross. It's gross. Right? And their ears are dull of hearing. They can't really hear. They can't hear with their inner ear. They can't hear with their spiritual ear. All right? And their eyes, they have closed. The spiritual eye, they have closed. So they're looking at it blinded. You know, with at least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand or overstand with their heart, with their consciousness, the labona, and shall be converted, shall be converted from that astray way and now in the way, the truth, and the life of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I, Yeshua, is saying, I should heal them. They said there's many ways to God. Don't believe the hype. You understand? It's an antichrist sequel. It's, a, it's just an antichrist sequel. Don't believe that. Oh, there's many ways to God. There isn't many gods. Yeah, true. There are many gods. But there's only one true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one who created the heavens, the earth, the seas, and all, say, all that is therein. Verse 16. But blessed are your eyes. He's speaking to the disciples, to those who have made a conscious you know what I'm saying? Effort and making their wills obedient. You know what I'm saying? To good influence. Who have taken that Shema, Yishroel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Achad. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say to you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see. Many of the prophets that wanted to see these days that we're in. And the only reason why some of y'all are scared and confused is because you're ignorant. Because you already don't know who you are. You understand truly. If you know who you are, you're not building up on that foundation. And, and, and we're going to get to a point that we wanted to share right here. Let's just get through this right here. And we're going to connect this right here. And to hear those things which you hear. All that we are hearing about. All these new discoveries and everything else. And these, these buried art and facts. And have heard and have not heard them. So then Christ says, Yeshua says, the Moshiach says, Hear ye therefore the parable, the Misale, or in Hebrew, the Mishle, in, in Ethiopic, the Misale, Mishle, Misale, tomato, tomato, in the Afro-Shemitic, right? Hear the Mishale, or the Misale, of the sower, of the sower, the one who goes forth to sow. It's like when you look at the, at the Perth in Cheru, and, and the Anu, the, the, the text of Annie, of Ani, of Annie, you see where he's sowing. Him and his wife are in the, the Egyptian Elysian field. They're in that, that paradise. That's why a lot of people in Christianity say, well, when I die, I'm going to, like, this heaven, this paradise. We can see that paradise even in the ancient Egyptian mysteries, but many of them don't understand. They see it. They hear about it, but they don't understand it. But Christ is saying to us, here, Shema, Shema, Shemu, Yosen, ye, therefore, the parable of the sower. Verse 19, when anyone heareth, when anyone heareth the what? The word, the word, the kal, the, the devar, 
or the Debar, the Debar in the Hebrew, or the Kav, right? When you want to hear the word of the Malkut, the Mengisht, and understand it not, that don't understand it, they hear about this, they hear about Jah, Rast, Farah, they hear many so-called Rast, they hear about it, but do they overstand it? Do they truly? Yeah, I'm not over. Do you really? Do you over the pure language is the key to I and I culture, the royal Amharic? Do you know your fidels? Do you even have 33 basic degrees? Now, um, we see that we 